Okay, so we, we start now, okay, about uh, this presentation is, uh, as I said, about the Triangulum project. This is the framework. Um, it's a project that started uh, already uh, more than three years ago. So we are now in a, in a really an implementation stage that we want to share with you. And uh, for this, uh, I am uh, Uriol Llevot. I am the head uh, of innovation section at the municipality of Sabadell. The city of Sabadell is a city of 200,000 inhabitants um, very close from where we are now, uh, just 25 kilometers. And um, here with me I have uh, Mr. Joan Casanovas, which is uh, manager at the Fundació per la Industria, um, which is an association of uh, business partners, uh, mainly in the field of uh, textile manufacturing, uh, that promoted this initiative to uh, actually enhance the uh, uh, capabilities of Sabadell, of the city of Sabadell, uh, and also innovation in the in the city. And we also have uh, with me uh, uh, Mark Cox, which is uh, also the task force leader at the innovation space of the Technical University of Eindhoven. Uh, the Technical University of Eindhoven is uh, participating in this uh, Horizon 2020 project uh, as the city of Sabadell. And we have, I think, uh, 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 concluded a very good uh, collaboration, the three uh, parties uh, that uh, we want to share with you and, and show uh, very specific uh, projects that we are doing. Um, first, just a, a very short background about the Triangulum project. Um, the Triangulum um, in Sabadell uh, has been concretized in a, uh, elaboration of uh, indicators uh, about 108 uh, indicators using the DPSIR uh, methodology. So this included uh, um, uh, pressures, driving forces um, uh, in, in many fields of urban management, which allowed us to really uh, um, know the, the problems of the city, the challenges that the city is facing. And the Triangulum is very much about uh, deep learning and replication from what they call the lighthouse cities. Uh, in this case, it's the city of Eindhoven, it's the city of Manchester in the United Kingdom, and the city of Stavanger in Norway, towards the follower cities, which in this case are uh, the city of Sabadell, ourselves, uh, the city of Prague, and the city of Leipzig in Germany. We learn a lot from them uh, through these uh, visits, workshops, and webinars. And finally, it comes back to our, the local level. It, com it comes back to Sabadell, where we involve this uh, local ecosystem, uh, Fundació per la Industria here present, but not only. There were more than 20 uh, local associations that participated in these local workshops. And with that, we have, in the end, an implementation strategy with 10 innovative actions. These are actions that have to be implemented during the project, so before February 2020. At least 50% of it has to be implemented. And the challenge is that the municipality or the follower cities in this case do not have the budget coming from the European Commission, but have to find new business models, new ways to uh, cover uh, the costs to implement these actions. So this is also a challenge about finding new collaborations, uh, new business models. Just a little bit the, the, the plan the, the, that I already uh, commented before. We are now at the last stage. We are at the stage of implementing or struggling to implement this uh, implementation strategy with the 10 actions uh, before uh, January uh, 2020. What we learned from the Lighthouse Cities, what we learned from Manchester, from Stavanger, from Eindhoven, um, many uh, technologies that they implemented in the field of video conferences, electric buses, public lighting. It's mainly, the Triangulum, it's mainly about mobility, energy, and ICT. We have uh, uh, access to a catalog of, I would say, ha 100 solutions uh, that have been applied to this city. And we have the technical support from partners from these cities to do part of it in Sabadell, in our city. What we agreed in Sabadell, those 10 actions, uh, wh what are they? What are they? We have, uh, very briefly, uh, the ones you see on the screen, the 
Centillo platform, the adaptation of the Centillo platform in Sabadell, the project that also has also been conducted by Diputació de Barcelona. Uh, city visualization technologies, smart economic development in the field of smart cities, sport and health. Today, we want to speak about this specifically, the collaboration, this triple helix collaboration today um, in this particular action. Maker space, city beacons, innovative public lighting, energy efficiency in residential buildings, green last mile delivery of goods, renewable of the municipal fleet, and the promotion of green mobility at schools. This is all ongoing, and uh, we want to show today the first uh, results for um, the number three for this, for this particular action. So here we are talking specifically about sports and health. Okay, and, and I will leave the word after to Juan to explain a little bit why we choose sport and health in Sabadell, okay? It's triple helix. You are maybe all familiar with those terms, triple helix, quadruple helix. It's about, in this case, collaboration between municipalities, so public administration, business, and university. And we created a new uh, legal uh, institution, which is the um, cluster of uh, sports and innovation, Sabadell Innovation Sports uh, Cluster. Um, to uh, really have the, the power to act and locally and uh, move forward those uh, projects. Um, what is all that about? Uh, is about prototyping, is about really creating new uh, solutions that after can be uh, uh, taken by the private sector and can be upscaled and marketed. We want that these solutions are first tested in Sabadell talking about the fields of uh, sports and health and urban innovation. And we will refer to one specific uh, prototype today, which is the 3D model of Sabadell. The 3D model of Sabadell that uh, the Technical University of Eindhoven, uh, with uh, a very specific uh, acceleration method, is promoting and uh, developing. But first, as I said, uh, I want that uh, Joan Casanovas uh, from the Fundación de la Industria explains a little bit more about why sports and health in Sabadell and what is the role of the, your uh, uh, association in those, in those projects. Thank you, Oriol. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to talk about Fundació per la Industria. Fundació per la Industria, as, as the name says, is a foundation, the aim of which, uh, the object of which is to uh, develop and to reinforce the industrial sense of the city of Sabadell, which has been a heritage uh, for many years, especially uh, in textile industry and in mechanical industry. And uh, we want to upgrade also the, uh, the economy and the industries in Sabadell into other fields uh, more related to smart cities. Fundació per la Industria saw uh, an opportunity in Sabadell to develop new businesses in the area of sports, sports and health, and especially in the cluster of sports and health. Uh, why was that uh, selected? It was basically selected because we have in Sabadell a very strong uh, basement of sports uh, community and also a sports club. We have, for instance, one club that represents approximately 12% of the population. They are members of this club. And this club has Olympic uh, facilities for uh, swimming, for water polo, uh, for all different kinds of uh, sports. This uh, club has approximately around 27,000 members, which, as I said, it represents more or less 12% of the population of Sabadell. But this is not the only club. We have more clubs in Sabadell. We have many people uh, acting in the, in the field of uh, sports. We have also a, a huge uh, area for uh, track and field, which is a covered track and field with 400 meters, uh, which is uh, used for European uh, championships and world, world championships. We saw that we had all the elements and all the facilities to develop further the world of a sport, but also in connection with 
the health and innovation. We have a heritage of innovation through our industries and we, what we want to do is that this innovation goes into the fields of sport and health. We have also a research center in health, which is Parc Taulí. It's uh, also a huge uh, area devoted to health. Uh, it's not only a hospital, it's a research, research area. And together, joining forces with them, we develop the cluster of uh, Sabadell Innovation and Sport. Uh, further from these connections, we discover that Sabadell has many potentials in the field of the industry and in the field of the uh, smart cities. So together with uh, Eindhoven University, we envisage new challenges to be presented in Sabadell and new developments to be made in Sabadell according uh, to the needs of the, the cluster. But we want to go further than this. Uh, so the, the, the objective of the Foundation for the Industry is to go further. Uh, and we want to really make Sabadell an area where the four helix, you were talking about the three helix, but we would like to go a little bit further and to move into the four helix and convert this project into a real four helix uh, movement. In Sabadell there is uh, possibilities to do so and the municipality of Sabadell has also taken the, uh, the responsibility, I would say, to also uh, push forwards, forward to these projects. There are many other projects also uh, that are being presented by Fundació per la Industria, but I would not take, uh, take it too long because uh, today we're talking about this Sabadell Innovation Sport and Cluster. If you have any other questions about it, I would be gladly responding to them. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. And now I would like to present you Mark, which is Mark Cox uh, from the TUE, from the Technical University of Eindhoven, who is, uh, I would say, a master of innovation or, or of pushing uh, and pushing and pushing and pushing uh, projects uh, forward. And uh, you will explain a little bit more about what is so uh, unique in, in your university. How do you do to accelerate and to, and to really uh, move forward those uh, innovation projects and how we could apply that to, to Sabadell. Thank you very much, Oriol. I don't think we're that unique, but we're trying to be like unique, just like everybody else does. Maybe go to the next slide. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think the spirit, there's also the spirit I note here in Sabadell is like you want to make a change for the better. And uh, that's the spirit you should keep in every project, in everything you do. I think all your life. It's not for me, for you, for all the people involved. Um, what you do should be for the benefit of society. So that means you have to have societal impact, economical impact, otherwise it's a no-go. You spend a lot of time and effort on something that is quite useless or has very little impact. Um, so what we did in the Triangulum and what I liked the most was the, the, the trying of new things and for example, the new models of doing innovation. So the traditional way is you do a startup, but a startup has very little chance of succeeding and growing. It's very, very little chance. You have to have like 100 startups, 90 will fail and 10 will grow, but that means also you put effort, resources, money in the 90 that will die. And of course the people uh, in these 90 startups will learn something, but actually the efficiency of such a process is rather low. So in the Triangulum project, what we did is um, a different approach is that we put all kinds of uh, people together that who are like closely related on the topic, so data science, for example, and health, e-health, uh, but we're not competing with each other. And we actually oblige them to work together. So, and then you see that the new things, new ideas appear, uh, the, the process is much more efficient, and also it's more resilient. So when you have like a group of companies or startups working together, then uh, one can fail, of course, it can always happen, but the big part of it, like 80%, will be there after one or two or three years. And what we also found out is like in our case, um, most of these companies arising from this experiment have a really, really fast growth. Um, I think that's one of the learning lessons, of the lessons learned in this process. Um, so my idea was now, we did it in Eindhoven, very funny, because you control the local culture, you control your uh, local network. 
but to do, use the same principle in an international context, it's much more challenging. So you need to find the right people. Well, we met somewhere in the past. I think we had a good team to, to take up this challenge. So I'm really looking forward to do this. Um, we get the support of some great students with the right spirit. Um, then about the, the, the way of thinking. Uh, it's good to note that universities are not like static organizations. They change in time. Um, how they manage the, the internal structure and what the, actually the attribution to society is. So for example, this was for the, for the high class. And it was more like research. And then this was actually more bigger. This is small scale. This is bigger. And this is the third generation, but now the fourth generation is coming up. And that means that more um, output coming out of such a university should be for the benefit of society. This was like a very uh, close environment, just for the top level of like aristocrats. But in time, this is changing. And I think the same is also for, for companies, and the same is valid for municipalities. You should be aware that we're always in transition. It's for a company, it's for an institute, but also as a human being. You're always in transition. It's never static. Can you do the next slide? Yes, I will skip the one. Um, but in order to succeed, you need this cooperation with all kinds of other types of actors. And of course, if you talk about academia, it's a lot of people. You talk about professors, you talk managers, you talk students, you talk researchers. But there's also a civil society for industry, for government. So it's a very simple scheme to set up on a slide. In reality, it's a very complex scheme. And you need a lot of like social skills and insight in how processes work in order to bring this all together as a, like a functioning machine. It's like a very complex engine, but if you understand the principle, you can apply it, of course, everywhere and in every sector. Um, the next one is on, uh, if you work together, of course, it's not about now, it's about the future. You want to anticipate of the future because then you're resilient for the future. And that means also if you work in a corporation, with industry, with uh, society, that you have to adapt the strategy like every five years. If you do not adapt your strategy, actually you, lag, yeah, you become a laggard. It's, it's the end of the process. So this is specifically for the region of Eindhoven. Every five years there's an update. There's already like a, a next update, but they're not on the screen. Um, and you do this with all stakeholders involved. So from day one, this is like, um, accepted by all stakeholders. And that's really, really important because otherwise you get a competition, resources are not officially used, end of story. Uh, I'm really convinced that applying the same methodology in Sabadell will work also here. And of course you work on sports, we work mainly on technology, but the methodology is the same. Thank you, Mark. Just to, to conclude, I, I wanted to uh, refer a little bit more uh, technically to the project that we are uh, right now, this day is cooperating with uh, the Technical University of Eindhoven uh, related to the 3D model, okay, that I, I mentioned before. So, uh, from the city of Sabadell, we consider that the city visualization technologies are key. Uh, we have uh, a problem regarding lack of participation of citizens, lack of interest of citizens uh, with the municipal affairs, and we really think that we have to improve the way uh, we uh, show things, we show the municipal initiative. Uh, you can see here how important are screens, how important are uh, images. And we believe in the power of 3D, the power of expressing uh, the urban uh, context into uh, the 3D. And that's the, the project also that uh, the, the team of the TUE uh, accepted. And that's what we want to do uh, before, uh, the, uh, before the, the end of the first semester next year. So hopefully when we come back here <laughs> next year, we will be able to present already this prototype uh, of, the, of the 3D model. Um, we want also that the private sector takes interest on this. We want that they um, plug in new data into this model. So uh, we want really that the, the data can become uh, a business model so that uh, third parties are, uh, want to invest in, in this project. This is not only uh, the municipality project or the university project. In order to be sustainable, we have to involve uh, the business partners and catch interest from the business partners. Uh, we also want that this is a physical model, okay? You have here inside this uh, uh, 
this igloo, you have the, uh, the uh, model, actually, and, and you can see how powerful it is uh, uh, and how uh, attractive it is to, to show it in the, in the physical model that combines also digital elements, for example, through, through augmented reality. We have started evaluating what could be the first data that is inserted into this 3D model of Sabadell. We see a potential in the field of noise, in the field of uh, also pollution. Uh, no, uh, the sound sensors have incredible uh, applications. Uh, we see it in the field of, uh, for example, uh, police, in the field of uh, preventing crime to happen because uh, it allows you to anticipate when, uh, for example, a fight is starting according to the, uh, to the shouts that, you, that the sensor is detecting. And this can be very easily represented into a 3D model. Also for the pollution side, uh, for example, the building heights count a lot uh, uh, on whether uh, a street can be polluted or not. So we think that the pollution sensors that the municipality of Sabadell is installing at the moment can be very well represented into this uh, 3D model. But we believe, as I said, that uh, this will be a platform to insert uh, loads of data. Uh, we see also uh, many fields of interest uh, in the tourism sector uh, to represent uh, the tourist uh, attractions of Sabadell, the, its industrial past, for example, into the 3D model. And from this spark of uh, these first use cases of uh, pollution and, and noise, uh, we really believe uh, that uh, we can have a very complete uh, model uh, that can, can be a, a, a test bed, uh, very, very useful for, for the city. Um, so that was it. Uh, I just uh, have here some uh, brochures of the Triangulum proje project, if you are interested to know more about it. Uh, we will come back next year with the with the results, okay? Uh, and uh, since uh, since then, uh, we will keep in touch. Thank you.